Merry Christmas from all of us here at ABC 13. Hundreds of healthcare workers have lined up to get vaccinated in recent days, and we now know who is next in line, how the state plans to make sure the second tier gets their shot. Scaling back again. Some Southeast Texas counties cracking down on COVID-19 restrictions. Several areas forced to close bars and reduce restaurant capacity to 50%. Stimulus checks could go out as early as next week, and while some local leaders applaud the latest relief bill, others are slamming it. ABC 13 speaks to the Houston employee who found the body of Instagram influencer Alexis Sharkey as family and friends gather to remember her. Multiple police chases in the past 24 hours leave one woman dead and several others in the hospital. HPD saying the suspects have no one to blame but themselves. And Houstonians come together to make sure children get at least one gift this Christmas. We stop by a drive through toy giveaway today. Healthcare workers were first to get the COVID-19 vaccine. Now we're learning more about the next group of people that will get their dose. The state announced yesterday that the next round goes to those 65 and older and people 16 and older with chronic medical conditions. For a look at how Houston plans to do it, let's go live to ABC 13's Marla Carter in the Med Center this evening. Marla. That's right, Eric, and there's a lot of questions for that group. They want to know when they can get the vaccine and where to get the, that vaccine. So we're answering those questions for you tonight. As doses of the Moderna and Pfizer vaccine ship out, healthcare workers are first in line to get it. So far, more than 32,000 Texas Medical Center frontline workers have been vaccinated. Soon, the next group of people will get the vaccine. Group 1B. Medical leaders discussed how that would look at a Zoom news conference. We're going to have to have a network outside of hospitals to get people vaccinated. And we know that some of the commercial pharmacies are working with the federal government already targeting the nursing homes and other vulnerable populations. It's going to be a huge undertaking. Group 1B includes people over the age of 65 and those 16 and older with chronic medical conditions such as cancer, heart conditions and obesity. That equates to 8 million people in Texas, though some of them are eligible to be vaccinated in Group 1A. So how will they reach all those people? In a perfect world, um, everyone who is on that list would have a primary care physician who would be able to reach out to them and coordinate with them to getting uh, vaccinated. And we, we still hope that that will happen to a large degree. But we also know that there are people who will meet those qualifications who don't necessarily have a primary care physician. And if someone doesn't have a primary care physician, will they need to prove they have a medical condition. And so we still need to figure out how we're going to get them uh, advertise, communicate, educate them on uh, what, you know, why they should become vaccinated, where they can get vaccinated. And then, you know, is there going to be a, a, you know, a check and a balance to make sure you really have the disease you claim? I, I don't know how we would be able to do that. Um, so there's lots of conversations now. Remember, Moderna and Pfizer requires two doses taken weeks apart. So doctors are preparing for that too. Well, certainly we have to have our administration sites well prepared. We have to have a very precise schedule for delivery. And then we need to have an effective communications approach to remind people, not only our own employees, but particularly our patients, those who will administer the vaccine to in phase 1B. As far as when you could get it, it all depends on supply and when hospitals and providers get more vaccine. But once Group 1A is complete, medical providers are not expected to waste any time moving to the next group. That ebb and flow that we will roll from one to the other, and we don't want vaccines sitting in, in freezers. We want them in, in people's arms. The general public could see their first dose in April. Marla Carter, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. And Governor Greg Abbott received the COVID-19 vaccine in Austin today, saying he wanted to show Texans how safe and easy it is. That I will never ask any Texan to do something that I'm not willing to do myself. So I'm gonna step up, I'm gonna take the vaccine, and show you everything is going to be just fine. Abbott said by the end of this month, there will be more than 1 million vaccines distributed across the state of Texas. And a big announcement for parts of Southeast Texas today. Some counties will have to once again scale back on their COVID restrictions. They'll be forced to close bars, lower restaurant capacity, among other things as well. ABC 13's Pooja Lodia has more on how business owners are reacting.
Three days until Christmas and Galveston is busy with tourists and residents enjoying the holiday season. But state health officials say COVID-19 cases are rising. It's not so much about the rules, but are people following the rules? As of 8 o'clock this morning, all bars here are required to close. All restaurants are required to reduce capacity to 15% at the most. And hospitals must cancel elective surgeries too. I oppose it, but there's really nothing that I can do about it. It's not a local order. It's a state order. You see, the Department of State Health Services divides the state into what are called trauma service areas. Galveston County stretches all the way to Beaumont and includes Brazoria, Chambers, and Liberty Counties. For the past seven days, COVID-19 patients in this region as a whole have hit 15% of all hospitalizations, which according to state law, triggers the restrictions. It's happened in dozens of counties, including Dallas. The governor still has his own police force with the TABC. But as far as local law enforcement resources, we're very busy with organized crime, uh, with uh, unfortunate shooting that occurred here recently. His people are tied up with actual things like death that need to be dealt with and not counting people in a restaurant. Galveston's county judge didn't provide proof, but claims the state hospitalization data is incorrect and has asked for an exemption. Meanwhile, local business owners say they're in trouble. That every business should have the right every morning to go to their business and turn that sign that says open for business. If you don't want to go to a business, you can stay home. You don't have to go there. People have got to keep their jobs. They got to keep businesses open. In Galveston, Pooja Lodia, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. COVID-19 stimulus checks could be start being sent out as early as next week. So let's break down how much people could be getting here. People making up to $75,000 will get a $600 check. Couples making up to $150,000 will get a $1,200 check. And parents will get $600 for each dependent child under 17. And $300 will be added each week to jobless benefits. But not everyone agreed with the COVID-19 relief bill here. Texas Senator Ted Cruz released a statement calling it a wasteful end of the year spending bill, saying Democrats rejected good faith efforts to pass targeted relief. Senator John Cornyn also weighed in, saying he knows it won't erase financial uncertainty, but it will go a long way, he says, to provide help. He voiced appreciation for his colleagues who fought for a deal that will help so many. And you can go to abc13.com right now to find a stimulus check calculator. Just input your filing status, how many dependent children in your home and your income, when it sh then it shows you how much of a stimulus payment to expect. Okay, temperatures are expected to drop again tomorrow and rain is on the way. Let's get over to Chief Forecaster David Tillman. And Eric, it's all due to this strong cold front that's moving in our direction. That front is going to be dropping to the south throughout the day tomorrow. And as it's approaching us from the north, we'll begin to see scattered showers and thunderstorms develop during the afternoon. A couple of these cells could be severe with damaging straight line wind. Then that front is going to move through and it's going to turn cold and windy here in southeast Texas. Here's a look at the temperature trend tomorrow. 74 degrees in the middle part of the afternoon, dropping all the way down down to 51 degrees at midnight. Christmas Eve is going to be cold. Christmas Day is going to be chilly as well. I'll have the details coming up later in your forecast. All right, David, thanks a lot. And now to a tragic story out of North Houston. Police say an 18 year old man was showing his 19 year old sister a new gun when it went off. The bullet hit the sister in the neck, killing her. Police are interviewing eyewitnesses, but say this is just a tragic accident. And the mother of a man shot and killed by a Lamarck police officer is reacting to the recently released body cam footage of his death. A Zoom press conference held by attorney Ben Crump came one day after the footage depicting Joshua Feast went public. According to Crump, the footage contradicts what investigators initially stated about the shooting. His mother says this is the hardest thing she's ever gone through. And it hurt me to see that Officer Santos let my son bleed out on the ground after he begged for help. He kept asking for help. And then after he took his last breath, he was even handcuffed, handcuffed. 
Feast was outside of his uncle's home on December 9th. Lamarck officer Jose Santos pulled up to Feast yelling his name. Feast ran. His uncle said the officer shot Feast in the back. So far, no disciplinary action has been taken against officer Jose Santos. And after more than a month long search, police have arrested a person of interest in the shooting death of HPD Sergeant Sean Rios. Today, Jason Frank Vasquez made appearance in court for unrelated DWI charges from last year. Sergeant Rios was shot and killed along the North Feeder Road back on November 9th. Vasquez has not been charged for Rios' death, though HPD plans to question Vasquez about his involvement. 24-year-old Robert Solis here has been charged. He remains in jail. And now to the latest on the mystery death of Instagram personality Alexis Sharkey. Homicide detectives still calling it an active and ongoing investigation. Today, ABC 13 spoke with Houston worker who found Sharkey's body. Johnson Richardson described finding her as bizarre and said there were no clothes and no visible wounds on her body. He claimed she looked as if someone delicately placed her along the side of the road. We just done and we looking, I'm looking, but there wasn't no visible wounds. It was like she just got out the tub, her body was clean. It wasn't, you know, nothing on her body, her body was clean. Vasquez's family held a private, uh, Alexis's family held a private viewing for her this week as they continue to wait for an update on the case. Well, disheartening news tonight for the family of 20 missing 21 year old Texas State student from Missouri City here. Texas EquiSearch suspended its efforts to find Jason Landry until law enforcement gives them credible leads. Last night, his family held a prayer vigil asking for a Christmas miracle. Jason was driving home last week when he crashed in a rural area near Luling. His keys, wallet and cell phone left in his car. Authorities believe he was able to get out of his car and walk away, but his family has no idea where he is. Okay, multiple police chases overnight land several people in the hospital. What HPD has to say right after the break, plus a partial home collapse here just north of downtown. What caused this mess coming up at 630? Four people are recovering in a hospital tonight, including a toddler after possibly getting carbon monoxide poisoning. Happened at a home on Cairnless in northwest Harris County here. The Cy Fair Fire Department believes a portable generator in the garage was being used without proper ventilation. One person is in critical condition. The other three serious but stable, including a three-year-old boy. Yesterday at 6, we told you about a wild chase with Harris County deputies that left a woman dead. Then, just hours later, three more chases, this time with HPD, happened overnight. Two of them sent innocent people to the hospital. Chief Art Acevedo spoke with ABC 13 reporter Shelly Childers. She joins us live from HPD headquarters with why he says chases could be on the rise and is hope for a future with no police pursuits. Yeah, that's right. We talked about a range of items during this interview earlier today, Eric, but the chief tells me over the past decade, they'd average about two police chases per day. But over the past year, that has increased to about three a day. He says the economic crisis could be playing a role as they see crime rates also on the rise. But he has a warning to drivers tonight. Evading police almost never works. Three Houston police chases overnight, all ending in crashes. This one on the North 610 Loop at Irvington in a fiery blaze. Going golf, he just ran across the freeway. It's trying to melt, great shirt, great pass, he ran across the freeway. This suspect was caught and taken to the hospital with a broken hip. Police say he was wanted for outstanding warrants in Harris County before fleeing Houston police Monday night. HPD Chief Art Acevedo says 85 to 90 percent of the drivers who flee are wanted for other crimes. The three chases last night, no exception. The second driver crashing at Westheimer and Briar Park, police say, illegally had a gun. And the third driver crashing at Cavalcade and Chickering police say was in a stolen car. An innocent person injured in each of these two chases. One is one too many. He says these crashes are rare. Over 90% of them uh, go without uh, without a hitch, without anyone getting hurt, without any crashes. Like another pursuit Monday evening around 5, two women eventually gave up on the shoulder of 59. He says they balance the risk of letting a suspect go with the risk each pursuit poses to the public. I can tell you I monitor the radio when I hear a pursuit. 
uh, I'm not afraid to, uh, or hesitant to call it off if, if, we're, if, if it's a traffic violation. The chief says rapidly advancing car technology could one day allow police to remotely disable a car. Sooner than people realize we're going to be able to bring these pursuits to conclusion, utilizing the science and the technology uh, rather than the pursuit intervention or or having just to chase these folks. And in every case last night, the suspect driver was caught and arrested. From downtown, Shelley Childers, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. The temperatures are dropping and we can see some rain on the way. Plans for your full holiday forecast right after the break. Now, AccuWeather with 13 Eyewitness News Chief Forecaster David Tillman. Well, most of us want some cold, festive weather for Christmas, and we certainly do have that in the forecast, courtesy of a cold front in this big storm system uh, that's going to be crossing the country. This upper low is going to be moving by to the north of us, but on its backside by Christmas morning, we're going to have these strong jet stream winds gathering up, uh, gathering up cold Canadian air and then depositing it in the central part of the country all the way down to the Gulf Coast. Check out these temperatures Christmas morning, 40s for deep south Texas, 30s for the rest of of the state that will cross the freeze line into the 20s in places like Arkansas and Oklahoma. You get up into the Midwest and we're talking single digits and teens up around Chicago and St. Louis. Specifically for us for Christmas Eve, 52 degrees for a high temperature. It is going to be very windy and chilly all day coming up on Thursday. And then as we head into Christmas Day on Friday, a high of 60 after temperatures get close to freezing on Christmas morning. So we've got uh, some chilly weather on the way for Christmas. Outside right now, it's mild. We're at 63 degrees. Clouds are increasing. We've got a southeast wind at 13 miles per hour. In Galveston, we're at 63 as well with an east-southeast wind at 11. Dew points are in the 50s, so temperatures are not going to fall all that much overnight tonight. We're thinking a low of 59 degrees in Galveston, 57 in Pasadena, about 56 in Houston, about 56 in Katy. High temperatures for tomorrow, widespread in the low to middle 70s. So we've got another balmy day day on the way before temperatures fall as we get into tomorrow evening. Here's future track. We'll see those clouds increase overnight tonight. There could be just enough moisture around first thing in the morning for an isolated shower. And then as we get into the afternoon hours, as the front gets closer to us, we'll have an upper disturbance moving through. That's going to spark scattered showers and thunderstorms. And because there's a lot of wind energy in the atmosphere and because the middle and upper atmospheres are very dry, a couple of these thunderstorm cells could pack a punch with some damage straight line when there's something we'll be watching for tomorrow. Once that front clears all of that out of here tomorrow evening, it'll turn windy and much colder. Again, thanks or the, or Christmas Eve is looking like a very windy and chilly day for us. As far as who has the best chance of seeing an isolated strong storm, it's basically from Houston to the east and south, all the way through parts of Louisiana, Mississippi, all the way east towards Florida. And check out these gusty winds. There's the front of uh, the tomorrow evening. It'll be well south of us, winds could be gusting 20, 30, 40, maybe 50 miles per hour near the coast. So some strong winds. When you wake up first thing on Thursday morning, uh, the winds will still be howling out there and it'll be so cold that wind chills will be in the upper 20s. After that, we'll begin to see the winds continue to gust as we head into the afternoon only to begin to subside by Christmas Eve evening. That is going to allow temperatures to fall again as we get into Christmas morning towards freezing. 58 overnight 74 for a high tomorrow 38 to 52 on Thursday keep in mind we'll have some rain around tomorrow afternoon and evening and then look at Christmas 33 in the morning 64 high we do warm up over the weekend just in time for another storm system to hit our way as we get into the middle part of next week all right David thanks a lot and some Christmas cheer was present at a Sunnyside Elementary today as another toy drive happened before the holiday here Mayor Sylvester Turner and other local leaders participated in the drive through toy giveaway for Sunnyside Elementary students. The event was sponsored by rapper Travis Scott's Cactus Jack Foundation. We are here because of Travis Scott and the Cactus Jack Foundation and his entire team. They've been amazing. To, they've adopted the Sunnyside community. He's just blessed this community. He wants to give back and we're just thankful for him for all the things he's doing for the city, for the mayor's office, for complete communities, for Sunnyside. 
The Cactus Jack Foundation donated $2,000 in toys and supplies today, an event with as well food, blankets, PPE, and even some Christmas trees. All right, the James Harden drama continues to play out, and things are getting even more interesting for the Rockets. Plus, the latest on the Texans search for a new head coach, while the timing of a coaching candidate interview is getting a lot of attention. Here we go with James Harden. Will this be every day drip, drip, drip as the team tries to deal with their unhappy superstar? The Athletic reports that Harden's had verbal confrontations with his Rockets teammates at practice and threw a basketball at new teammate Jay Sean Tate. For context here, emotions can run high at NBA workouts, but more important than all of it, if you're the Rockets, it has to take more than that from Harden to get you to cave and trade him for less than full value. More now on the Texans interview with former Lions and Colts head coach Jim Caldwell. We reported it last night. The timing of that interview, talking with Caldwell before the Texans hired their new general manager, has raised some eyebrows, but it does not diminish Caldwell's standing in NFL circles. Widely, if not universally respected for his character, his leadership, particularly his work with quarterbacks. Credit the Texans for doing thorough work here. Texans have also met with an internal candidate for their general manager's job, Matt Bazergan, joined the Texans back in 2018 as their director of player personnel. Eric Moore in the next half hour, of course. We're looking forward to it, Greg. Thanks a lot. Okay, some breaking news from the White House. President Donald Trump commuted the sentence of former Congressman Steve Stockman. We'll explain why the White House issued his clemency in just a moment. Instead of a gingerbread house, how about a charcuterie chalet? We talked to a Houston food blogger who shows us a new spin on this holiday tradition. And shopping on the railroad tracks, it's a problem we help solve tomorrow morning here on 13. ABC 13 Eyewitness News at 6.30. Now, breaking news. Breaking tonight, President Donald Trump issuing pardons within the last hour. Among them, former Texas Congressman Steve Stockman. He was convicted in 2018 of misuse of charitable funds and sentenced to 10 years in prison. President Trump has commuted the rest of his sentence. He will now be under supervised release and must pay $1 million in restitution. The White House says this commutation was issued because the 64-year-old has underlying health conditions and has already gotten COVID. COVID-19 in prison. In all, President Trump has now pardoned 15 people and granted clemency to five. Now at 6.30, the family of the man shot and killed by a Lamarck police officer is reacting to the recently released body cam footage of his death. A Zoom press conference held by attorney Benjamin Crump came one day after this footage depicting Joshua Feast went public. Crump says the footage contradicts what investigators initially stated about the shooting. So far, no dis Disciplinary action has been taken against that officer. Meanwhile, in North Houston tonight, police tell us an 18 year old accidentally shot and killed his 19 year old sister. This all happened off of Wellington Street. Officers believe the 18 year old was showing his sister his new gun when it went off suddenly, hitting her in the neck, killing her. Right now, police are calling this a tragic accident. And good news here tonight no injuries after a partial house collapse north of downtown off of White Oak Bayou. Look at this video. Investigators tell us no one was in the house at the time. It fell off its cinder blocks earlier this afternoon. Homicide detectives say the investigation into the death of Instagram personality Alexis Sharkey is active and ongoing. Today, ABC 13 spoke with the man who found Sharkey's body, telling us that she looked as if someone had delicately placed her along the road. Alexis's family held a private viewing for her this week. And we start here tonight. Some southeast Texas counties are now under new COVID-19 restrictions, all because of the rise in hospitalizations. Yes, uh, the new restrictions are for Texas Trauma Service Area R. Now that includes Brazoria, Chambers, Galveston, Hardin, Jasper, Jefferson, Liberty, Newton, and Orange Counties. You can see them right here on the map. This rollback includes closing bars, reducing restaurant capacity down to 50%, and cancels most elective medical procedures at hospitals. Now this is all happening because Governor Governor Greg Abbott's executive order on reopening requires tighten restrictions once an area reaches a certain threshold for hospitalizations. Right now in that region, there are only eight available ICU beds and 248 other hospital beds out of more than 1400. So giving you a big picture here tonight, taking a look across 
the state. We're looking at the number of new daily reported cases of COVID-19 here over the last two weeks. The number of new cases has been below 10,000, only just five of the last 14 days. The rolling 14 day average is now over 11,000 new cases. Of course, the good news coming out this week is the vaccine, and we turn our focus there because we are getting a better idea of how many Texans fall into that next vaccine group. All right, the Texas Department of State Health Services saying phase 1B includes about 8 million people. Now, these are the people we're talking about here on your screen. Those over the age of 65 with at least one chronic medical condition that puts them at the increased risk of severe illness from COVID-19, such as cancer, COPD, and type 2 diabetes. All right, here in Texas and nationwide, healthcare workers continue to get their first doses of the vaccine as more supplies roll out. This comes after the U.S. set a new hospitalization record yesterday. ABC's Rena Roy joining us live in New York with more. Rena? Well, Lona and Chauncey, even as shots are administered, officials are urging Americans not to let their guards down, saying some of our darkest days are still ahead of us. Millions of vials shipped and hundreds of thousands of doses injected across the country in just weeks. The Moderna and Pfizer vaccines now giving America its best tool to fight back against the coronavirus. The nation's top infectious disease expert himself getting his shot today, along with Health and Human Services Secretary Alex Azar. I'm doing it because I want to symbolize to people the importance that everyone gets vaccinated who can get vaccinated, but also it's it's a good feeling of accomplishment because this originated in laboratories in my institute. They joined President-elect Joe Biden, plus thousands of seniors and healthcare workers on the front lines now feeling a sense of hope. When I open the box, it's like opening a present. A new layer of defense for doctors and nurses, with 30 percent of hospitals in the U.S. reporting their ICUs are more than 80 percent full, according to an internal HHS memo obtained by ABC News. The nation battling its worst month of the pandemic, averaging more than 2,600 deaths a day, and now growing concern with the holidays coming up. And here's the simple truth. Our darkest days in the battle against COVID are ahead of us, not behind us. We need everyone to mask up, stay socially distanced, avoid large gatherings, particularly inside. Los Angeles County, California, hit especially hard. If we have a surge upon a surge, then we really risk getting to a place where the hospital systems are completely overwhelmed. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo now instructing hospitals across the state to test for a new variant of the virus spreading across the UK and several other European countries. If it's here, we want to know it. We want to isolate it immediately. The World Health Organization says this particular mutation may be more infectious, but the CDC says it has not yet been detected here in the U.S. And federal officials say it will likely be months until the general population has access to the vaccines. Live in New York tonight, Rena Roy for ABC 13 Eyewitness News. Rena, thank you for the very latest. Meanwhile, right now on ABC13.com and the news app, you can check out where you fall in line for the COVID-19 vaccine here in Texas. Six questions will determine which phase you'll likely fall into and also estimate of how many people are ahead of you. Questions include like where you live, what your job is, and your health and living situation. Again, we are in phase 1A, which is healthcare workers and people in long-term care facilities to get those vaccines. Well, we are waiting on on President Trump to sign the stimulus bill, but just in the last 15 minutes, he released a statement on Twitter saying that he will not sign it because he wants Congress to rework it. He's calling for an increase in stimulus checks from $600 in that current bill to $2,000 per person, 4,000 for couples. The stimulus is tied to a federal spending bill that would keep the federal government from shutting down. We're gonna keep you posted on what happens. Meanwhile, Montgomery ISD will offer free rapid COVID-19 tests to students and staff beginning next month. The tests are for those who either have COVID-19 symptoms or have it in close contact with someone who has the virus. The tests are only for students and staff and are optional. Montgomery ISD is also changing its quarantine guidelines from 14 days to 10 days. That's in accordance with the current CDC guidelines.
All right, we are looking ahead to tomorrow. Make sure you have your umbrella handy if you have plans. We're expecting rain to move through. Our chief forecaster, David Tillman, here to give us an update on the timeline. David? Yeah, and this front that's coming in alone is going to have a huge impact on our weather, not just tomorrow with the rain, but with the cold air to follow that's going to last all the way into and through Christmas. Here's that front by noontime tomorrow. It'll be still northwest of us, but we'll begin to see some isolated showers develop. Those will turn into scattered thunderstorms as we get into tomorrow afternoon and evening. A couple of those could be on the strong side of damaging wind. After that, that front moves on by and it'll be turning cold and windy after that. Here's Thursday's weather. Christmas Eve, actually Wednesday's weather, will be at 74 degrees in the middle part of the afternoon. Then the front will move through, dropping all the way down to 51 degrees by midnight. Check out what's going to happen on Christmas Eve. Temperatures don't rise all that much. It's going to be windy all day as temperatures only make it to the low maybe middle 50s in spots. We'll look at the specific numbers for Christmas Day. We'll talk more about these storms tomorrow and your forecast straight ahead. Well, Christmas came early from one for lo one local family. You might remember this story from back in November. I did right here on the news at 630. I introduced you to Angelina Flores and her three boys who were at the time all using one laptop for virtual learning. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, well, mom was caught in the crossfire in a gang shootout while out one night getting the boys food. She was struck in the arm and has been recovering ever since. Well, Angelina sent me this picture right here a few days ago saying how excited the boys were when they got an unexpected knock at the door. It was representatives from the DePelchin Children's Center delivering some much needed laptops for the family. Yes, um, it was a total surprise getting the laptop. We did not expect them so soon. So when Priscilla came in from DePelch and she called and she's like, are y'all home? And I said, yeah, we're home. And she goes, well, I have a surprise for y'all outside. And well, the boys were just in shock when they saw her um, give the give them the laptop, they were just like they were excited and they said thank you so much. You know, they hugged her and you know we were just really grateful. Well, this is all a part of a big laptop drive. ABC 13 partnered with the Pelchin and it all helped 80 families with laptops this holiday season. Mom told me she's so thankful, especially now as COVID numbers are spiking. She didn't exactly want to send the kids back to school just yet, but had decided because of the challenge of virtual learning with one laptop for all three boys, they were going to go back to school. She says now they have the laptops and they can now mm. learn safely at home virtually. Good what for them. Great story. Yeah, yeah. Well, reach for the stars right here from Houston. This is pretty cool. We're going to explain how a new venture for the Houston spaceport will not only make space more accessible, but it'll also help our local economy. And hey guys, clock is ticking. You're running out of time to send Christmas gifts. We're going to tell you which shipping deadlines are almost up and we'll go over your options if you want your gifts to arrive on time. And also coming up tonight at 650, the Cougars getting ready for the New Mexico Bowl. We have an update on how COVID is impacting the team in their final game of the season. Stay with us. President Donald Trump weighing some new measures to overturn the election when she lost to president-elect Joe Biden by more than 7 million votes. Sources telling ABC News he met with people like controversial attorney Sidney Powell and former national security advisor Michael Flynn, who suggested putting martial law in place in battleground states the president lost and seizing some voting machines. A group of House Republicans also offering to contest the Electoral College vote when it's presented to Congress January 6th. GOP Senate Senators say that effort won't go anywhere. Back here at home, new details about a major development between the Houston Spaceport and Axiom Space, the aerospace company planning to make its headquarters at the spaceport that's still being built at it's, Ellington Airport. Yeah, exciting stuff here. Now, once it is finished, it will then serve as a launch and landing site for the space flight vehicles. ABC 13's TJ Parker has more tonight on this new partnership and what it means for the Houston economy. Houston Spaceport and Axiom Space are moving forward to build the world's first commercial space station. It will be the world's first free flying internationally available private space station that will serve as humanity's central hub for research, manufacturing and commerce 
in low Earth orbit. Houston Spaceport is the country's 10th commercially licensed spaceport at Ellington Airport. Axiom Space will build their 14-acre headquarter campus there, bringing in more than a thousand high-paying jobs. And as this project moves forward and this announcement is made, people who live and work, including small business owners, are looking forward to this project moving forward. There's obviously, for our benefit, that domino effect um, for our restaurants and, uh, and other local businesses. Jonathan Cottrell grew up in the area. He owns Cottrell Realty and says this announcement is big. I expect a boom in new construction and housing in the area. Yeah, I think it's a um, fantastic opportunity for the community. David Cimenti owns Instant Imprints on Space Center Boulevard and believes a lot of businesses will benefit. It's exciting to be a part of it, to be in a community that supports that and, and has, you know, opportunity to create jobs for more families. An exciting future for the space city. At Ellington Airport, I'm TJ Parker, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. TJ, thanks. Well, last minute shoppers and shippers, now is the time to send those packages just in time for Christmas. But you will expect some delays to get your items to their destination in time. Here's some shipping deadlines you need to know about tonight. If you ship tonight and want your packages to arrive by Christmas, well, you'll need to pay for the second day air at FedEx. There will also be extra shipping charges. If using the USPS at Priority Mail, well, Express is your safest choice at this point. Their deadline is tomorrow. And we're looking back on positive stories throughout 2020. Boy, don't we need it. You you can also watch all of our great stories of hope and kindness from this past year on our website at abc13.com slash localish or on the big screen by just downloading the ABC 13 app on your Fire Stick, Roku, TV, or your other streaming devices. All right, many of us will be staying home for Christmas, but for those of you who have to get out and travel, uh, this is what you'll be dealing with on Christmas Eve. Most of the nation actually will be rain and snow free, but the same system that's going to give us thunderstorms tomorrow is going to be producing some rain up and down the east coast of the United States. Some of those could be strong thunderstorms moving through Alabama and parts of Georgia and South Carolina and Florida. And on the backside of that system in the Midwest and Indiana and Ohio, Kentucky and Tennessee, we could be seeing the snowflakes fly behind that some very windy and cold weather uh, on uh, on Thursday a high of 36 in Memphis with windy conditions 49 in New Orleans with windy conditions 19 in Chicago with partly sunny skies 27 in St. Louis a little warmer farther to the west but still pretty chilly high temperatures in the 50s in the state of Texas uh, uh, with windy conditions consisting throughout the day as well here's Christmas Day now it's going to start off on the cold side in the 30s for just about all of southeast Texas, close to freezing for some. But we do expect some sunshine on Christmas Day. It won't be nearly as windy. Temperatures make it to 60 degrees. Of course, the elf is happy because he's dancing in cold and snowy conditions in, at the North Pole. Outside right out, 63 in Houston, 62 there in Conroe. Uh, low temperatures tonight, middle to upper 50s for most of southeast Texas. High temperatures for tomorrow before the front moves in. We'll make it to the low to middle and even upper 70s out there. There, and then we'll see temperatures fall like a rock as we get into tomorrow evening. Overnight tonight, we'll see an increase in clouds and maybe even a sprinkle first thing in the morning. Could be some patchy fog here or there, but not quite as dense as what we've seen recently. By noontime, again, an isolated shower possible. And then those showers and storms will pick up in intensity during the afternoon and evening hours. A couple of those could be on the strong side with strong winds. Once those thunderstorms move on, once the front moves through, it'll be windy and much colder by tomorrow evening and that chilly weather is going to stick around right into Thursday. The area most likely to see some isolated strong damaging winds is going to be along in east of the Houston area and then south down towards eastern parts of Matagorda County and parts of Missouri County and then check out the winds that we expect. The front will be off, off the coast by tomorrow evening at 10 p.m. We could be seeing gusts well into the 30 mile per hour range by that time maybe in the 40 to 50 mile for our range near the coast. Those winds will still be gusty first thing on a Christmas Eve morning with a winds gusting to 20 and 25 miles per hour. Wind chills will be in the upper 20s by that time and then it's going to be breezy all day long coming up on uh, Christmas Eve as well. So Christmas Eve is going to be a very windy and chilly one. 74 tomorrow, 60% chance for mainly afternoon thunder showers dry but windy and cold coming up on Thursday near freezing Christmas morning back up to 60 degrees.
degrees and then will start to warm up over the weekend. That'll set the stage for another storm system to move in next week with another chance for rain. Yeah, it looks like a beautiful, beautiful Christmas coming up, David. Texans ramping up their search for a brand new general manager. Tough times for the Rockets and the shorthanded Cougars work to get ready to play a college bowl game next. The Sports Report is sponsored by Mercedes-Benz. The best or nothing. Now, 13 Eyewitness News with Sports Director Greg Bailey. Internal candidates get a shot with the Texans, too. The team has talked with Matt Bazergan about the vacant general manager's job. Bazergan joined the Texans 2018 as the team's director of player personnel. Latest reports on the Rockets really put the new coach Steven Silas on the spot. The athletic reporting that unhappy superstar James Harden has had verbal altercations with his teammates at practice. Well, Coach Silas has done a remarkable job handling everything Harden so far. He's cool, he's professional, he's focused on basketball. Silas now has his work cut out to keep this team on track. They will open a new season tomorrow. Two days ahead of the Cougars bowl game, Dana Holgerson telling ESPN Radio here in Houston, U of H will be missing 15 to 20 players for the matchup against Hawaii. COVID, opt-outs, grade issues in the era of virtual classes, they are all issues. In reality, playing shorthanded par for the course in 2020, despite repeated cancellations, precious few practices, this Cougars team forged ahead. It's not the classic bowl game experience, but the players are thankful for the chance to play. Um, we're attacking it. Um, it's just another game on the schedule and we're, um, you know, obviously we're thankful to be playing after we had as many games as we did get canceled. So we're just happy to play and, um, you know, we want to send the seniors and the guys who aren't going to be returning. We want to send them out the right way and, um, and, and come out with a W. A&M's Jalen Widemeyer, one of three finalists for the Mackey Award. It goes to the top tight end in college football. Superstar out of Dickinson, averaged 11 yards a catch, scored six touchdowns for one of the best teams in the country. High school playoffs continue with games on Christmas Eve, so very 2020. That includes the regional semifinal game for Tompkins and North Shore. Tompkins has made great playoff runs before. This one a little bit different. Falcons defense scored three touchdowns in barely three minutes to beat Cy Fair last time out. They'll need more of that against a loaded squad from North Shore. Head coach Todd McVay telling me today a special team culture gives his squad a chance. But they enjoy each other. They, they love each other. They care. Uh, you know, they pull for each other on our sidelines. Um, you know, we like to say we're a one through 99 team that everybody has value. And, you know, if you're on the sideline, you better be cheering. You know, we always talk about forget about me. I love you. Play for your brother. Last stop, what a great day for the young people from the Boys and Girls Club. The Rockets forward P.J. Tucker delivering a shopping spree today at Academy Sports. Tucker explaining he grew up in the Boys and Girls Club. It means the world to him to offer a great Christmas to kids who are just like him. Alona, we love those stories this time of year. Oh, and we need them, don't we, this year yeah. more than ever, Greg. Thank you. And we're going to be right back with a final look at your forecast. This segment is sponsored by the Houston Museum of Natural Science. Visit today to see Body Worlds. All right, we've got a strong cold front moving in tomorrow. That's going to give us a chance for rain and colder temperatures just in time for Christmas. Here's what's going to happen as we head into the afternoon hours. We'll see scattered showers turn into uh, some thunderstorms out there, especially from Houston to the east and south. That front will blast through the area. We'll have windy and much colder air moving in after that. Hour by hour forecast for tomorrow has us in the mid 70s for a high and then dropping into the mid 50s by 9 p.m. Rain should begin to taper off by then. Three day forecast looks like this. After we get done with those thunderstorms in that front on Wednesday, it is going to be dry on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. 38 to 52 on Thursday. 60, uh, uh, 60 for high on Christmas after a low of 33. And then your extended forecast shows milder weather for the weekend, but it's going to get quite chilly for a couple of days as we head into Christmas after we get past tomorrow's balmy 74 degrees. Ooh, it's going to feel like the holidays, isn't it, David? Thank <laughs> you. I'm is. loving that winter forecast. Well, our next newscast coming up at 9 o'clock tonight with Elisa Rivas and a Chief Forecaster David Tillman. I believe that Chauncey Glover will be there tonight. I was about to say, you guys need to add my picture. It'll be me tonight yes. with David. You can watch it live on our streaming TV apps like Roku, Fire TV, and Apple TV as well. All right. In the meantime, <laughs> that's going to do it for us here tonight on Eyewitness News at 630. You can go to ABC13.com right now to get a full recap of the day 
today's top stories. Thank you so much for being here with us on this Tuesday night. Have a great evening, friends, and be safe out there. Eyewitness News tonight, Houston's number one 10 o'clock news.